Hi there, Izzy from Digital Goja Showrooms. And today we're going to take a look at the most asked questions about how to use the Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon on my Canon Rebel T6i. What I did is I looked over the internet, I checked uh, the blogs, I checked customer service questions with Amazon, with eBay, with even our own customer service questions and phone calls and I tried to put together the more basic questions that are asked about how to use the Altura Photo ETTL strobe. This is very basic so we're going to go over some of the more important useful features. Some of you might be a little bit more advanced but you know what take a look at this video anyway it might answer some questions that you haven't asked before and again if this video is helpful remember to click the like button underneath and subscribe to the channel for some future sessions and questions that will be answered. And again, if you have any further questions or comments, remember to leave them underneath. Now, without further delay, let's take a look at these questions that are being asked about the Altura Photo ETTL strobe. And we're going to see how it works with our Canon Rebel T6i. How to insert your batteries into the Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon. Very simply, it works with four AA batteries. Make sure you work with high quality, high power, high amperage batteries. Try to stay away from those economical dollar store batteries, they don't last as long. Plus, work either with alkalines, with lithium disposable AA's also, or with nickel metal hydride rechargeables, again with higher amperage. You're going to go to the side, notice the arrow pointing down, push, and now lift up. Now when you look here, you're going to notice that right on the cover is your nomenclature. This shows the polarity settings. You're going to have a plus and minus. Follow these. If you place these in here incorrectly, you're going to have to cram the door shut, which will damage the unit. Plus, you also can have the possibility of shorting it out by putting the polarities in there incorrectly. So now we pick up our double A's and place them in there one at a time. And now push down and push up the opposite of what we did to open it. Now it's locked up and you are ready to start rolling. One of the more popular questions I've seen about the Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon is how do I activate the strobe? Very simply, first you of course have to have your four AA batteries in here and you're going to press the on off button and hold it just for a little bit, a couple of seconds that activates it, that turns on your pilot light, and you'll hear a little funky noise. That goes away, that just means that the flash is being activated. And you also have the capability of lighting up the backlight by just gently pressing the on off button and pressing it again, that activates your backlight. Another question that I've seen is how do I change modes on my Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon? Very simply, you have to have the unit on, again the on off button is over here, and then you're going to press the mode button. Now, with the mode button, press it once and you switch into TTL mode, press it again, now you go into full manual, one more time, now you go into the strobostopic effect. Next time you go into your slave mode 1, S1, and your slave mode 2, S2, and when you press it again, you start right back at the beginning at TTL mode. Does my Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon come with a carrying case? Yes, it does. It comes with a really nice, well-built padded case has an attachment in the back so you can put it onto your favorite camera strap or camera bag. Here's the flash inside. You even have a holding compartment for a external use stand. That way allows you to work with it wirelessly. And then the nice thing right under here, 
Here's your dome diffuser and a really nice feature so you can take extra double A's batteries with you. Remember our strobes take a lot of power. Plus if you don't have any room in a bag because sometimes I like to carry my Rebel in a small bag like this, easy to take along and I have it pretty much filled with other accessories but a lot of the bags out on the market have the capability of attaching this to your belt. I usually don't use it that way so guess what? This is a great way for me to actually fit it on here and now with the velcro just attach it back on and voila now I can take it with me at all times. Does my Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon have a built-in diffuser? Why yes it does. Notice this area right here. Pull on it gently and it comes straight out. There's your diffuser. Now this is your bounce card. Gently push that back in because you don't have any use for it at the moment. So right now you have a wide diffuser which allows you to work with wider angle perspective lenses and also if you're doing portrait photography this gives you a little bit softer light so it gives you a nice soft even glow. How do I attach my Altura Photo ETTL strobe for Canon onto my Canon Rebel T6i? Very simple it's very easy to do. Number one, you want to make sure that your camera is off and so is the flash. Never try to mount them when the units are on because you might have an accident and actually short out either the camera hot shoe or the strobe itself. So always work with the units off. Now, notice this is your metal hot shoe. This is your metal hot shoe, very well constructed. And here is the hot shoe on your camera. You're going to put this straight in. Do not wiggle from side to side. Line it up and push gently straight in. Now you're going to use the knurled knob and you're going to lock it in place. This way it's locked in place, not excessively tight, but you want to make sure this is locked so that you don't have any accidents and have the unit fall off. And now you can turn on your camera and power on your strobe and you're ready to start shooting. Oh, and of course, never try to take pictures with your lens cap on. But there you go, you're ready to start shooting. Will my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon work on full automatic? Yes, it will. If you set it to the standard setting, which is a lot of consumers now want to work with that auto setting, as long as your flash is set to TTL, it does all the work for you. It knows how to synchronize it and how to change the aperture according to your zooming situation and the lighting situation too. So look at how when I zoomed out, it automatically knew to change it to F8 and that's the setting that it also has on the Rebel itself. So it automatically does all the adjusting for you. So if you are a beginner or a novice and you don't want to mess around with some of the settings, you can still leave it on full automatic and the camera and the flash, they'll work as one. Does my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon have a manual mode? Absolutely. Turn it on. Remember, it's going to make that funky little noise whenever you turn it on. Not to worry, it doesn't affect your imaging. Hit the mode button until you get to the letter M. Now, by using the left button and the right button, I can change the power output and even the exposure value. Notice how I can go all the way up to full power. Now, of course, since you're doing this on manual, you're going to need a way to measure the light. Now, in the more popular days, we walked around with one of these. Not many of us work with a light meter anymore. I do, I can't leave home without it. But if you choose not to use a light meter, remember we still have the tried and true system, especially with the newer technology, that you fire off the flash and you look at your image and if you notice that your image is completely washed out, well, guess what? You're gonna have to change that setting because that is way too much light. 
So you keep changing your exposure and now try it again and now voila I got an image. So you can try this method which again works for a lot of us in today's advanced digital market and if not you walk around with one of these guys. They're still available. I, they're available on a lot of online retailers. This one was available through Amazon. So you make the call, but it does allow you to have full control over your exposure. What flash mode should I set my Rebel T6i when I'm working with the Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon? Well, honestly, I would prefer going, first of all, you have to have your camera set to manual. That way it activates your full menu. So when you click on the menu, now you have on your first folder, you have your flash control opened up. Click on that and then you want to scroll down to where it says external flash function setting and you want to set that to ETTL. That's the more advanced one. It also has regular TTL and you have your external settings for wireless and of course your manual. Set it to ETTL because that is the more advanced metering system that functions between the Altura and your Rebel T6i. That way you can set it to full automatic if you choose to and it does all the settings for you and gives you the correct exposure or you can be more creative and go to full manual and then play around with the different settings yourself but the flash and the camera still function as one because they're working in conjunction. How do I set up my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon for wireless imaging? Very simple, you're going to have to do some settings on your camera also. So the first thing we want to do is again active or set it to manual you want to set your command dial to manual because this is the one that's going to open up your full menu. You want to scroll down on your first icon to flash control and you want to go down to built-in flash settings. Now when you go to the first opening there, built-in flash, click on that, you have normal firing, easy wireless. I would highly suggest switching it to easy wireless. That makes your life so much simpler. Now. On your Altura Photo, you are going to have to set it to the S1 mode or the S2 mode depending on, since right now your camera is set to the Easy Wireless, it's going to also use the standard TTL free pre-fire, so hit the mode and go to S2. Now remember, on this mode, the information is not passing between the camera and the Altura flash, so you do have to set your power ratio. So right now, I'm going to be pretty close to my subject matter so I can set it to 1 16th power. Now, this is a very important point. This is your sensor. This has to be facing your camera so that you can have the flash on your camera trigger this one. So, now that doesn't mean that the flash has to be headed in that direction. That's the beauty of having a swivel head. You can move this and aim it at your subject matter, but this guy has to be faced the direction of your camera. So now I'm going to pop up my strobe and when I fire this guy off, it in turn will fire off the Altura. Does my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon have a high speed setting? Well, it's not a high sync speed, which is what some customers are getting confused that I've noticed in some of the questions out there. But it does have a high speed setting if you're trying to do some continuous flash shooting. Activate your strobe and hit the mode button until you bring it over to the multiple little flash lines. What that means is now it allows you to shoot at a particular power ratio. And notice how I can change the ratio here. And also by holding the set button, I can change the amount of flashes that I want it to do per second. So this way, if I'm trying to capture very fast moving subject matter, I can do so. Remember to always hit the set button to hold it in place. That locks it for you. And now having my Rebel T6i to continue shooting, remember that's your button right over here. 
and then you set it to the continuous shooting and you also have the silent continuous shooting. That's an incredible feature. That's a new feature added for this camera. Not a problem. I'm here in the studio and I don't have a problem with the silent mode so I can go ahead and set it to the standard. But now as I hold my shutter down, notice how it keeps up with the camera and gives me multiple flashes. So this way I can capture fast moving subject matter. It's a great feature. Very handy when you're trying to do this kind of imaging. Can I change the exposure value on my Altura Photo ETTO flash for Canon even though it's on TTO? Absolutely. All you have to do is use the right button for plus and you can go up to three different exposure. You can go all the way up to plus three exposure value compensation or you can use the left button and you can go again all the way down to minus three exposure values compensation. And this you set very easily by doing it here with both of these buttons. Of course, this does have a system of memory. So when you turn it off and you turn it back on again, whatever setting you had on here, it will stay. So for example, if I have it to plus one third exposure compensation and turn it back on, it's going to remember that that's the setting I saved it at. So you do have to switch it back to zero yourself for it to default back to the natural setting. Will my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon show me the f-stop for my TTL setting on the LCD? Yes, it does. Now, of course, I prefer working on manual myself. I'm old school, so on manual, I'm going to set the f-stop that I prefer and notice how as I change it, it automatically indicates it on the screen. That way, I can pick the depth of field that I want. With that f-stop set, the strobe will automatically read through the metering system on the camera, henceforth the TTL term, and graduate the amount of flash output needed for that particular f-stop. I always synchronize at 1 100th or 1 125th of a second. That just seems to work well for me. I don't have very fast moving subject matter. Does my Altura Photo ETTL flash for Canon zoom as I zoom the lens automatically? Yes, it does. Notice how when I zoom back and forth, it is changing the perspective. Now it's going to make a funky little noise, don't worry about it. All of them do that, including some of the more expensive OEM ones. It's not going to interfere with your imaging. But notice how your f-stop also changes because here I'm working with a variable aperture lens. So it automatically knows what the maximum aperture is on the setting of the zoom and it lets you know on the screen. Now, for those that prefer to manually zoom, you do have that option also. You hold down the zoom button until it blinks, and now you can use the right or left arrow to change your zoom perspective. And once you have the desired zoom that you prefer, hit the set button and that holds it in place.